Potter's Journal. It is January 2021. Today on the Potter's Wheel, I'm going to be making some berry colanders. I usually make them small and cheap. Um, this is not exactly the time of year you think about berry colanders, but I got a special order. It's from a friend who I call Special Order Annie. Um, she broke one of her favorite pieces that she had picked up years ago. There are some special requirements, so we'll see what she has to say that. And I haven't said this for a while. Let's see what's going on in the studio today. Um, and then we'll check out and see what we can find in the garden. Okay, so this is it. We need to make this. It is the Humpty Dumpty Bowl. It took a great fall. This um, was brought here to me by Special Order Annie. I have got some very precise measurements and detailed sketches and um, added 12%. That's what it said in the catalog the shrinkage rate was um, to the width and to the height. So we'll see if we can create this bowl again. <laughs> I have got the calipers set and we have got, this is where I'm guessing, I have got one and just under a half pounds and I may try to learn to throw small this year. I've got a half a pound for the um, little balls of clay. I hope I've got all the right tools. Um, the big one is the potter's wheel and this time of year it's a big studio to heat and to sit in one place and keep your hand in a bucket of water and wet clay is really hard so I move the wheel inside the office. <laughs> Let's see what's going on inside the office today. This was such a good idea. Okay, moving just just the throwing area and to, to this little space um, between my desk and the the door, the back door, and um, some a shelf with some books and some pottery on it. I, it is cold in the studio. I, I don't mind all the other work, the you know glazing, wedging clay, um, but um, the the sitting uh, with your hands in a bucket of cold water and just sitting, not moving. And it's the lowest part of the studio, a high roof, so it is um, cold down low. And if you climb a ladder, it is warm. Um, I am not finding this as easy as I thought, creating this Humpty Dumpty Bowl again. Um, and the other question, too, is, well, why does she want this bowl um, reproduced? Why do we collect things, and why might... We want to see and have the same bowl again, and not just look for something new and different. Um, okay, here is a look back to a year ago when um, Special Order Annie um, stopped with um, the request. Okay, Annie! Usually, hey, I would say it's a beautiful day in Potter's Hood when you stop by because you've been so good to me, but you've got what? What's I have a broken bowl. Oh, no. And what I, what I, happened? A dear friend of mine gave it to me about 15 years ago. Okay. It sits on my counter by my sink. I use yeah. it so often. My husband uh, reached over it the other day to get to the water, and okay. it fell on the floor. Well, why would you want, what, what's so important, why why this bowl? Why is it so special? I use it all the time. <laughs> okay. And it came from such a, a, a dear person okay. that I, and he's not okay. with us anymore. Okay, and so he, this is, a, it's, it's a memory. It's a memory. A memory of that person. And did, uh, was this the start of your collection? It was part of it, yes. He okay. shares the same love of pottery. Okay, okay. So you both had a passion for, for um, handmade pottery. He and, would go um, to the arts festival at Penn state every summer and bring oh, something back and okay. that was what he brought back it has a little 
plate to go under it. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you so still have that? I do have okay. the plate. And, okay. um, I mean, if you need the plate, but... Uh, yeah, well, just maybe an image if you send me an image. No, th there's there's no problem making a bowl like this. Right. But the glaze is a different story. That even a certified glaze glaze technician, I don't know that that's something that gets certified, but we'll just say a glaze engineer um, can have trouble coming up with a glaze and matching it. So for Annie, it was all about a memory. And I think that's what I was referring to last week when we were talking about collecting pots. I referred you back to um, a comment I left on um, oh, Karen's Pots and Glass last March and when she was showing her collection. And what I had said at the time was that uh, the pots that mean the most to me that I've collected were of uh, made by people I've known and have brought back memories. So that seems to be, yeah, especially for potters, a great way to collect, especially when you trade with somebody. Um, I am not finding this as easy as I thought it would be. Um, I'm, because for one thing, I'm discovering it's not my kind of pot. That I really do like country pottery, folk pottery, what would be called um, peasant wear. Um, pieces that, uh, my pots are fairly heavy, fairly thick. And, um, okay, the, uh, for a, a bit more durability, the, um, um, I'll say peasant wear often does have a bit of thickness. I did add about a half a pound to this, so um, compared to what I started with. Um, the first two were, as I said at the beginning of the video, but I um, have these at a pound and three quarters now. Okay, so I upped the last. I'm going to do about six of these. Um, it's, it's, um, okay, very thin all the way to the lip, and that's where I often leave a bit of thickness. Um, some potters will do a rolled rim for thickness and extra strength and durability, but it does have that bend in it, which um, probably adds to, okay, the strength. And, and that's what I'm having trouble. There's a sharp, um, sharp um, curve in the bottom part, and that's the part I'm having trouble getting. You know, the getting the inside, it just seems like um, rounding both the bottom and the side with the rib is giving me the inside shape. And then it's yeah rounded the bottom we will get this part right here and I'm gonna try maybe this time with a rib down there that the inside is pushed like that and maybe pushing it into the rib so I'm getting there but I'm not quite so I don't know the potter's moves and I had thought And in the early couple, of the, the first pieces, I was putting a very thin groove right here that would catch the glaze, but I see, ooh, glad I didn't hit it, that I missed, that um, that may be going in there naturally when the bend is put in it. Okay, so... That is it. We'll um, refine this a bit more, the foot, when we trim it. Oh, so we've got, <laughs> okay, we've got the width about right, and now, yes, with the extra weight, we've got the height, too.
Okay. Now, and did I get the math right on the shrinkage? We will find out. Okay, I've got a shipping, pottery shipping project yet to do, and we will check the garden again. Okay, we will check the garden, but first I went through some intense negotiations with Lee LB Ceramics, and I have got ready to ship for a trade. A box in a box, some foam, the tape, and unless he says he likes the one on the right, I am sending the right on one on the left. At the craft festival, the ones with the bluey green aquae sea mist sold. And when they were gone, somebody said, don't you have any of the pretty color ones left? So I am so glad this will be going to the right person and not to those unappreciative savages at the craft show. So this was not at all bad for January. I never did the rutabagas before. Um, they can be mixed with mashed potatoes. And um, okay, and here this was. I was sorry, my sprouts just didn't sprout. I did have uh, one small like this for Christmas as well. Um, the kale. I am going to leave here most of it in the garden because it is fine in the cold weather but I think the cabbage, the Savoy cabbage, is good to pick that now. A couple little baby, baby reds here. There's not much to them but um, they are here. The um, radishes were a new discovery for me this year so that was great. More as a fall crop uh, starting in late August than taking it into January. And for the late stuff, it's more a matter of um, having it grown and just keeping it protected and covered. Um, uh, one little serving of broccoli. All these stems are edible, um, and they're very tender this time of year, so happy with that. Some herbs, there's some sage. Um, the last, okay, bowl of lettuce for the year. And, okay, a good bit of parsley yet. And somewhere, okay, here it is. It's to find some dill before the coldest took it. It's not in the best shape it could be, so I'm going to have to use it right away and pick through it. So, stop back, and um, we need to make a bigger colander for washing vegetables out in the yard and not taking the dirt in the house. And um, see what happens in the studio next week when you stop back. <laughs>